Hi guys, it's Steffi from the future while I'm editing because I have somehow deleted the intro footage to this video. So this is part three of the bookshelf tour. I know it's two in a week, but it's just been that kind of week. So I thought I would just keep on keeping on with the bookshelf tour. So I hope that you enjoy it. This is obviously the third shelf and this one comes beneath the last shelf that I showed you. So I will insert footage here and then I will start talking about books. We are on to bookshelf number three. So this is pretty much D through to G-ish. And this is what it looks like. I have some of my little Druids from Pete Cromer. I've got a whole stack of these. I just sort of collect them and then add little families of them to different shelves. I have my mug that I decorated and I need to fix it up. Um, but just more pens and a whole stack of books. So let's go through the books that I have kept on my shelf. The first book on my shelf is Boy Swallows Universe by Trent Dalton. This is Australian literature fiction. I bought it mostly because of the cover and I'm not entirely sure I understood all of the book. I know so many people who love this. I'm glad that I read it and I'm definitely keeping it because I love the cover so much. We have What the Woods Keep by Katia de Becerra. This was sort of an urban fantasy Love Oz YA story, which is why I really enjoyed it. It was delightfully creepy in a way. And another delightfully creepy Australian young adult book is Small Spaces by Sarah Epstein. This one is definitely crime, mystery, thriller, and it is creepy. It's about a young girl who was traumatized in her past and grew up believing that she had an imaginary friend and as we begin as we get through the story we begin to question whether or not that imaginary friend was actually imaginary so definitely worth checking out next up we have the books in the Spellslinger series by sebastian de castell i've mostly kept these because i love the covers that's a thing with me i like aesthetically pleasing things so there is book one Spellslinger. book two is shadow black i just love how the covers look like playing cards charm caster Soulbinder and Queen Slayer. These are YA fantasy, but they do have they have sort of something that makes me feel like it's almost of a young adult fantasy western, and they've got some good humor in them. Then there is Kindred, Twelve Queer Love Oz YA Stories, edited by Michael Earp. This is a reasonably recent short story collection by young adult authors that do feature queer characters and queer stories and it is absolutely delightful. Jane Steele by Lindsay Fay. This one I got onto because of Kirsty and Leanne and I absolutely adore it. It is historical fiction. It is sort of a Jane Eyre retelling and I desperately need to go back and reread it. The Eyre Affair by Jasper Ford. This book was gifted to me by a colleague who found it secondhand and bought it for me because they thought that I would like it and I'm very appreciative of them for doing that. So I'm keeping it because no one ever buys me books. Like no one buys me books. I should say I have read The Air Affair. It was a long time ago. So that one is also another one that's due for a reread. Then I have my Fleur Ferris books. Fleur Ferris writes young adult crime books. I think again, we'll just go in order of my favorites. Obviously meaning that if it's the last one doesn't mean it wasn't good. It just is not my favorite one. There is Black, which is set in a small town. I like small town crime mystery books. I just Think they're deeply atmospheric. Risk, which is all about um, cyber safety and the dangers of talking to people online or talking to some people online. Wreck. This was an interesting one because you get two different perspectives in this book. One that is told in the present day and one that is told in the past and also found. This is How It Always Is by Laurie Frankel. This one was recommended to me by Kathy and I absolutely adored it and then I found it really really cheap online so I bought a copy of it because this is a book that everyone needs to read and now I can hold it up and say go read it. I do have a stack of Neil Gaiman books but I might talk about all of those at the end because there's more of those on this shelf than anything else. I have the Lady Helen series by Alison Goodman so that starts with Lady Helen and the Dark Days Club, Lady Helen and the Dark Days Pact and Lady Helen and the Dark Days Deceit. These are Love Osway A historical paranormal books. I think the description is basically if Buffy lived in I think Regency London hunting demons. That's what this series would be. The last non Neil Gaiman book on my shelf is The Great Gatsby, a graphic adaptation by Nikki Greenberg, which is a delightfully bonkers um, comic book retelling of The Great Gatsby. All right, I have 11 Neil Gaiman books, so let's just go through them. There is The Ocean at the End of the Lane, which I really like. I know it's not every, not everyone's cup of tea, but this one I really enjoyed. M is for Magic, which I think is a middle grade story. Oh, it's sorry. 11 short stories in this one. The Graveyard Book, which is again another, I think, middle grade, younger YA 
Neil Gaiman book that I really really enjoyed about Nobody Owens who grows up in a graveyard raised by ghosts. I have the novelization of Coraline which you know anything about Coraline is delightfully creepy. Neverwhere which is one of his adult novels which is sort of very urban fantasy-esque in that you have a main character who lives in the real world but then discovers the under London world as well. Stardust which is just so fun. I love Stardust. Probably didn't love the book as much as I loved the movie but I did enjoy the book too. And Good Omens which he wrote with Terry Pratchett. I have the Coraline graphic adaptation, Norse mythology because I am a sucker for good Norse retellings of myths. And then two of the picture books. There's the Hansel and Gretel retelling illustrated by Lorenzo Matotti and then The Sleeper and the Spindle which was illustrated by Chris Riddell. And that my friends is Bookshelf 3. In the comments below let me know if you have read any of these books or if you have any questions about any of them. I hope that wherever you are in the world you are doing really well, that you're staying safe, healthy and sane and I will catch you guys in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.